Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. So the session for today is getting started with Power BI Desktop. Okay, a little about me. Uh, my name is uh, Akshata Revankar. I'm currently a lead data architect at Humana. And I've been in the reporting analytics space for about eight years. The best way to reach me is on LinkedIn. My uh, LinkedIn link is there. And I've been working with Microsoft products and I have done my certifications, starting off with Azure Fundamentals, then Data Engineer, Data Analyst, and very recently I completed my Azure Architect certification. Fun fact about me, uh, I love to uh, go hiking on nature trails. So if you happen to visit Louisville, Kentucky in USA, I would recommend some of the nature trails in Burnham Forest over here. So uh, to start off, I definitely want to thank the team of New Stars of Data for giving these, uh, a first time speaker like me this platform. And uh, my mentors, Joshua Higginbotham and Andy Yen, who have really helped me with this presentation to shape up in a way that I can present to an audience this big. Thank you. And uh, moving on. Our agenda for today. Um, we'll do a quick introduction to Power BI Desktop and uh, a working session uh, building two Power BI reports, and then we'll close with uh, some time for questions. Okay, so starting off, um, when we talk about Power BI, there are several components under this umbrella of Power BI. It could refer to several things, just the word Power BI. The first one, Power BI Desktop, and that's what today's session is about. We'll be doing a deep dive into the Power BI Desktop tool, and that's where you actually build your report. The next one is Power BI Service. This is where actually once you build your report on Power BI Desktop, you publish it on Power BI Service. This is more of a cloud service offering. You publish your report and the users you want your report, uh, you want to share your report with, they can go up to Power BI Service and open up your uh, the report that you have published. You can build a report on Power BI Service as well, but there will be some features that are available in desktop that won't be available in Power BI Service. And there is this one other feature called Dashboard, which is available only in Power BI Service. So a dashboard is nothing but a few visuals from your uh, desk, uh, Power BI report that's built uh, is on desktop is pulled in into a dashboard wherein you can click particular visual and drill down to the report. Uh, next is Power BI app. So app is pretty much, you would say something that you download from an app store. So on Power BI service, you have something called as an app store where you can bundle up your Power BI report that's built on a desktop and you have a dashboard that's built on Power BI service. You bundle it all together and publish it as an app on the Power BI app store. And anyone who wants to download your report or look at it can download from the Power BI app store and use it. The next one is Power BI mobile app. So this is just like any other app you download on your mobile or cell phone, and uh, it's available in App Store. So when you build your report on Power BI Desktop, it gives you also the ability to change the landscape that would work for a mobile viewing. So that's where uh, if you publish your report and you have users looking at it from a mobile app, that's what they will use to see your report. And the last one is Power BI Report Builder. This is nothing but your old um, SQL Server reporting service or SSRS as we know it. And you can build long paginated or scheduled reports in here. So uh, Power BI, that's pretty much about the Power BI umbrella. Okay, um, moving on. So who uses Power BI Desktop? So now we are doing a deep dive into Power BI Desktop. So who actually uses this, right? Um, it's mainly data analysts, BI professionals, to an extent, uh, data scientists as well, and report developers. That's pretty much where I, uh, that's the space I grew up in. So you have business partners and there are report developers who build Power BI reports for your business partners. And so why uh, use Power BI desktop? So the way Microsoft puts it together, and I love the Microsoft definition of it, you connect your data, you transform your data and you visualize it. And also the other definition they offer is you connect to your data so that you can see all the insights in your data. And then based on those insights, you can take action like things like you, how do I increase my sales? 
the best part about Power BI Desktop, it's free to download and use. So you would be wondering what's the catch, right? So that's where the difference with Power BI Service comes in. Power BI Service is with a subscription. So to publish your report and to let users access it on a web browser, you need a Power BI Service subscription where you can publish your report. But the workaround would be that you build your Power BI report on Power BI Desktop, and then you'll have the, uh, the when you save the file, it gets saved with a PBIX extension, right? So this PBIX file, you can share it with someone. Uh, you put it on a shared drive or you send it through email, depending on the size. And then if the other user has Power BI Desktop on their system, plus they have the access credentials or access to the data store you're using, they should be able to open the report and see everything that you have built and see the numbers and slice and dice the data. One fun fact on the side that I have right here is uh, a Gartner report from 2021. So this is more around why you should learn Power BI Desktop is it treats Microsoft, uh, I mean, it has put out there Microsoft as the leader in the Power BI space or in the BI space. Okay, moving on. So what can Power BI Desktop do? What I have here are some of the basic features, and this is what our demo will cover as well. Uh, Power BI Desktop lets you first connect to your data. That's get data. You connect to different data sources. It lets you profile your data. So you can see how does my data look? You know, how many unique values do I have? How many distinct values? How many val values are not good? How many values are null? So that's about data profiling. Transform data. A lot of times when we build a Power BI report, <clears throat> Um, or any BI report, we have the transformations done in the database itself, and we have a star schema or snowflake schema. But at, sometimes you need certain transformations to happen in the report itself. So you can do that within Power BI. It lets you perform ETL on your data. And if you have very varied sources and you think Power BI is the best place to perform the transformation and you don't want another source, yes, you can do that ETL in Power BI. Uh, next one is data modeling. So when I say data modeling, you can also build a, your star or snowflake schema within Power BI. It lets you do that. It gives a very nice interface to visualize and build your uh, relationships between table. If you don't have a time dimension in your table, yes, you can build that in Power BI desktop. Uh, next one is visualize data. So this is the main thing of Power BI where you can build in uh, quick graphs and visualize the data all that you have brought in into your Power BI report. And the last one is report filters. This is very important to any report, how you slice and dice your data. So to quickly to touch, touch upon some advanced features, which we will not be covering today in the demo. So that's the hierarchy. When I speak about hierarchy, it means hierarchical dimensions. To give you an example, it's anything that's manager, employee, and um, country, state, city. So that's kind of hierarchy. It lets you do those hierarchical dimensions. and it also lets you control your visuals as a drill round with those uh, with those hierarchical dimensions. Next one is measures, or we also uh, have a ref other word that is DAX or data analysis expressions. So what measures let you do is these are more of dynamic formulas. You know, you need formulas at runtime when you have reports where you have you know a numerator and denominator, and you know you cannot always uh, aggregate. Uh, the same way and have a same denominator, you need the denominator varying with what you're grouping by. So that's where the measures help you. It lets you build a dynamic formula when you're aggregating or any other um, aggregating functions. Uh, next is parameters. So this parameters let you control the data that you load into your Power BI report. So if you have a monthly report and you want the data loaded into your report to change every month, automatically you can set a parameter and pick it based on a table or some other calculated way, you can do that. Power M query. So this is again, another language just like DAX, but in this, you would also call it pivot query or M query. These are the different words you would hear. So what this can help with is, um, this is more around when you load your data. So the one way to differentiate between mQuery and DAX is mQuery is more around your ETL. That's when you load your data into your Power BI report. And DAX is when you are performing dynamic um, calculations on your visuals. Next is role level security. So this role level security and the uh, RBAC or role based access control kind of help you do uh, multiple uh, access, uh, sorry, um, uh, how you hide your sensitive data. So role level security will let you 
uh, keep so if you have users from sales and other finance you want certain amount of data to be able to uh, be visible to finance teams and some to the sales team so you can control that based on the active directory groups they are you can control the granularity of the data they can look at and roles based access control kind of helps with that functionality of based on the role they have the users can see certain uh, visuals in the data and certain amount of data tab reports is you can build multiple pages in your report okay so now we'll quickly get started with the demo and in the demo we'll do a walkthrough of the landscape and features of power bi desktop that's where you build your report and power bi editor power query editor that's where you do your etl and transformations we'll be creating two reports okay so let's get started So this is one of the reports that we will be building, and this is the other report. Uh, okay, so we'll look through the landscape of Power BI Desktop. So coming on to the uh, my left hand side, let me see if I can quickly highlight it. So yeah, so this is the space I'll be first talking about. So what we have first here is the report view. So report view let's will be always bringing up this canvas that's right in the middle where we see all these uh, visuals and title and graphs. So this is uh, when you're working on your canvas and you can quickly switch over to a data view that lets you see what data you have pulled in. So in this scenario, I just have one table. So I just see the data for that one table. If I have multiple tables here, I can see those. Uh, let me do this. I have a better example. Okay, yeah. So in this case, I have multiple tables. I can switch it and I can see the data view. Moving on, that's this is the modeling view where we talk about uh, where we spoke about you can do data modeling. So here you see it's one too many relationships, and then you can uh, build your table. If I double click this. It lets you, you can build these and you can change it. I can make it many to one or one to many over here, depending if you think the data, the way Power BI understood it is not right. Okay. And that covers the uh, left hand side panel. Now we'll go on the top part of it. So back to report view. So one thing I do want to mention is as we go through the top panel, that's this part, um, several of the functionalities that Power BI provides, they will be, I mean, just like this click, uh, get data or transform data, the same functionality will be available on other tabs or some other place. You can do the exact same thing, some different clicks in different places. You might be using one place more often and not so much. So these are some basic clipboard functions. This panel, the get data is how you connect your data sources. There are several data sources, we'll be looking at that. And then it gives you a quick clicks to some of the often uh, data sources you would connect to. You also have an option if you are connecting to data sources more often, it will be available at one click. The next is transform data. This will open up the Power Query Editor where you actually perform ETL on your data or any other transformations. <laughs> refresh is to quickly refresh your data. If you have the data source has changed or the word underlying data has changed, you can do a refreshing. So then we have uh, visuals. This uh, panel, I haven't found myself using uh, more often. We'll come to that. It's very quickly available on a right-hand side panel. So you can quickly pull these graphs or whichever you want. The next is measures. Measures is what we spoke about, dynamic formulas. Publish is when you when you use publish, you uh, publish it to a Power BI service on the, uh, on the cloud. Insert, again, like I said, it lets you uh, gives you the same function in multiple places. So I'll skip that. These are some AI visuals. We'll be looking at one of these today. Power apps, it lets you embed power apps within your Power BI report. And these are some text boxes like to put a title or some if you need an image or you need a button to do navigation. This, uh, that functionality is available here. Modeling is again, like I said, you can build a quick table or a quick measure. Manage relationships is the same thing. The pop-up we saw when we are on the modeling tab. New parameters, how you control, manage roles, the role-based or role sensitive we spoke about. And this is again, an AI feature of Q&A, you can do further with it. Next is view. So this is more about your presentation. Um, if I click this, if you see this part of the report that you see, 
which is colored in a purple, this is what your report will look like when it's published to Power BI service, right? So you won't see uh, the uh, format button and fields unless you're editing your report, but this is what your report will look like published and to the users who are accessing it. And it also lets you import themes if your company follows certain themes. It lets you import those themes and you can uh, use that theme for your report. Page view is this is how you would like to work with it. If you want to see the actual size when it's published or when you're working, you want it to fit into one page. Uh, mobile layout is how you can make it look on a mobile. You can drag and drop and configure your mobile look. It gives you the exact same images. Okay. Uh, bookmarks and uh, filters will be uh, filters will be looking at it. Bookmarks as if you want to bookmark certain report pages and leave some notes. Performance analyzer is uh, this is one of a very good feature. Let's say you build a report uh, a few years into it, a few months into it, it's not performing good. Performance analyzer lets you look at the different uh, module. If you pick a visual, it'll let you see whether the query is performing slow or the image rendering is performing slow. And according to that, you can make changes so that your report performance gets better, but it's very detailed and broken down. I have found it very useful. Sync slicers is if you have multiple pages of report and uh, slicer is one of the filter visuals that's available. It lets you sync all the filters across your report pages. Okay, the last is help. Then moving on to the most important part, which is the panel that you'll be using the most when building a Power BI report. So let me expand it. So the way, the right-hand side panel is the, what I'm referring to now. So let me quickly highlight it. That's this space. Okay, so let's start off with filters. This is part of your report. So filters is nothing but how you slice and dice your data. So it lets you put filters on a page filters for all pages. If I have multiple pages of report, like if I just click this, it builds another page and I can put visuals over there. So it lets me control filters on all pages. And it also lets me control filter for a specific visual. In order to do that, I have to click the particular visual or the graph. And if you see, it says filters on this visual and you can drag and drop. It automatically gives you some of the elements or the fields that are, that are part of your visual, or you can drag and drop or remove those. And this particular icon lets you hide this filter. It won't be visible or make it visible. Okay, so that's about filters. Let's look at visualization. So this is where most of the time you will use how to put the visuals on your or the graphs on your report. So, and the feature I like about this is you don't have to change much if you, I can quickly change it to a bar graph and see how my data looks, right? So. You can change the visuals. So these are, and you can download visuals and you can get more visuals. The panel below it is uh, what are the values, right? You know, and you can check the axis, secondary values. And the next tab is formatting. That's how your visual looks, the colors, the y-axis, the labels, the plot area. You can do a lot of formatting. The next one is an analytics feature. This is not, uh, this analytics feature is a relatively new feature. It's um, available for most of the visuals or graphs, I would say. And what you see here, um, like, you know, the trend line, constant line, this may not be the same for every visual because they don't make sense. Like if I move on to this uh, donut chart, you won't see any features. They say there are no analytic features available for this. Whereas this line graph, I have several features. I can put a constant line in the middle that shows um, the, at this point, I think I have a max line on the amount it shows what the max line and the mid, um, mean line is. Okay. So that's about the visualizations panel. And the last one is the fields panel. So this is where once you transform your data or whatever data you pull in, it gives you the list of tables and individual fields. And you can, this checkbox lets you pick and put that field in the graph that you're using. And also I like this nice thing of um, these tiny icons they give. So this one says it's a calendar. The submission sign tells me it's a number and I can aggregate this value. In this case here, it's referring as a number, but you wouldn't be aggregating it, but it identifies that this is a number field. Okay, so I think we have covered the Power BI desktop uh, landscape. We'll move on and, and start building a report now. Okay, and that's where we'll look at the Power Query Editor. So when you launch Power BI Desktop, 
um, this is how it will look the first time. And over here, since I've been working with it, I see a couple of sources already available. Let's close this and do get data. The first report that we'll be building is by connecting to an Excel. It will be a simple Excel. The focus is more to show how to build the visuals. And the second one will be connecting to a MySQL database and we'll be pulling in multiple tables. Okay, so let's do get data. I say, let me do more. Okay, so when I do get data, there are several sources that Power BI allows you to connect to and uh, it's always increasing. So you would see something like beta over here. That means this is still in trial and Power BI will look for feedback and see how useful this is or how they could do better. A lot of these sources like Microsoft SQL Server or Excel uh, will connect seamlessly. For a few others, you need to download and connect it. Like when I did MySQL, I had to uh, download the ODBC connector, set it up to be able to connect to MySQL. Okay, so that's these are the sources. There are several different ones that are available. Another good feature that I do want to mention here is the folder. So if you have several Excel files that are have the same number of columns, like if you have a file for every month, you can import the whole folder and Power BI will let you merge the data together. You don't have to import one Excel at a time. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at one of the Excels that we'll be working with today. This uh, sample that I'm working with is available free to download on Power BI website. You can download several samples that they have if you're starting off new and you want to play with something. They have uh, uh, Excel and few other data samples available. Okay, so uh, in this Excel, I just duplicated the sheet to show that you know it it treats it as a worksheet and it gives you the different tabs that you have in your worksheet available. Uh, so it lets me have a quick view of the data that I have here. And if I this is the data I want to uh, bring in, I just click uh, check the box and I do load. There's an option to transform data. So let me quickly show you what load will look like and then we'll come back and do the transform data. Okay. So it's loading the Excel and the first panel that it will upload is to the fields panel on the right hand side. Okay, so you see all your fields in here. It's automatically identified which are numbers, which are not, which are date, and what's text. So let me go ahead. So this is just a direct load without any transformation. And if your data is pretty clean and good, you all you need to go ahead and build visuals, this works for you. And so let's go ahead and delete this. And I go ahead and do it, get data again. So I have, have it available in my recent sources. I just click financial sample again. And this time we are going to do transform data. So this will actually open up the Power Query editor. So this is where, and this is a different interface from your Power BI desktop. So once it loads, let me, this. so if you see, I have the Power BI desktop at the back and I have my Power Query edited here, right? So this is a different interface. And um, this is where you perform most of your data transformations. So let me... I'm just unchecking a few things because we'll come to it slowly. Okay, so a quick overview of the Power BI Query Editor landscape. So if you are going to transform your data, you would be spending a whole lot of time here. So every data source that you pull in will be listed over here. So when I say data source, individual tables. So think of it as queries. So if you have uh, three different tables, they'll all be listed here. And if you're performing transformations and you're, right, you're connecting directly to a query, that would also be listed here. And within that, we have further functionalities to edit it, individual query. So these are, again, the new sources. You can manually enter data. Data source settings is just the connection. Connection string you can have here and you can edit and change it. Parameters is what we already spoke about. Uh, properties is just name and label. Advanced editor is important. Uh, this is where you have your M query or you know people who are more comfortable with 
uh, writing M query would just start writing their query in here to import the data from ETL. Okay. Uh, manage is just the columns or queries that you want to duplicate or how you do if you want the same query and you want to change it you can use that feature columns is you want to choose some columns keep some columns you can do those quick transformations with clicks remove and same with rows then sorting split column is uh, this feature is good so if you have an imported column that is comma separated or has some delimiter you can use a quick split column without writing a query and uh, it lets you split your column based on the special character or whatever uh, by delimiter. So one thing to remember is every time we do these transformations, our M query will keep changing or the Power M query because it's writing that code uh, in the backend, but it lets you do it with um, a code free or less code uh, to do the transformations. Group by is aggregation. Data type, I can quickly change my column data type. So over here, if you see this ABC, that tells me this is a text, I can instead just drop down and try to change it to something else. Okay. Um, use first row as headers, very useful with Excel, replace values. You can select a whole column and say, if I have none over here and I want it to be a different value, I can just do a replace value and tell it what value to replace it with, value to find and replace with. Uh, merge queries, append queries, very helpful. Merge queries is when you have uh, two different tables and you want them to merge together to make it one unified table given the granularity of the table is same. Yes, you can use merge query. Append queries is one about the other, like we spoke about the example of uh, different months. You want them to append it into one table. That's when you use append query. AI insight is something we won't be upon, touching upon today, but these are some further uh, good functionalities that Power BI offers. Transform. So these are some things that we can quickly modify. And like I said, a few of the functionalities get repeated across the tabs. So group by, use first row as headers, your transpose your data, reverse rows, or count aggregate rows, changing the data type, replace values, un pivot, unpivot your data, split column, I think we have covered all these. And date time, this is specific to a date time column, you can control that. And again, some Python scripts. Um, add column, we'll be looking through one of these functionalities right now, you can add additional column by transforming data. Uh, these are again some conditional column, how you want the column to work. Again, as some amount of transformations formatting. Let's see. Okay, I think we have covered that. Uh, view. So this is a nice place. Query settings is the same what we saw on the first page, uh, first tab. This is when I spoke about data profiling. This is pretty helpful. Quality, distribution, and column profile. So let's do one by one. Column quality, it tells you what of uh, how your data looks, whether there are any empty rows or empty values or how many of those don't be, uh, if Power BI thinks the text doesn't look valid, if some are numbers, most of them are numbers and there is some special character, it will find that for you. Next is column distribution. This tells how many distinct values, how many unique values you have. And the last one is column profile. It tells you the exact distribution. So let's switch to product. So it tells me how many of the Caratera product do I have? How many are there in Montana and what it looks like? So a very specific profiling of your data. Okay, so this is also good go to column is, let's say if you have a very long Excel with several hundred columns or a table, you can quickly select the column you want to go to and it lets you just go to that column. If you see it's highlighted that Salesforce. Advanced editor is again your Power M query. Query dependencies is good when you have several imported tables. It tells you how the data lineage is coming into. Okay, the last one is diagnostics. This is you would use again when you are trying to analyze your query performance of something that's not working right. It gives you step by step analysis. Moving on to the right hand side panel, this is this is a place you would end up using very often. So every time we make any transformation, it gets recorded over here. And so let's do a quick work around with that. So I have a date column and let's say I want to add a new column. I say a custom column. So it gives brings up this I can write. Let's say let's call it a week and I can do. Date dot. Day of the week name. OK. And then I put this 
and I select my date field, close my bracket, and I say, okay. Okay, something didn't work. Let's see, I can click this gear icon, bring that pop-up back. Okay, I have this date repeated over here. I say, okay. And we have a new column that has the, um, the day of the week. So, but uh, <clears throat> let's say if I don't want this anymore, I can quickly click this delete or the X and it should take the week column away. So where this comes as helpful is, let's say your query, uh, the ETL query is not performing, it's performing slow. So you would hear the term as query folding. That is, um, you can, there are certain of these transformations you can push back to your database, right? I mean, you whenever you're building your tables, or if you have some other, you can let it happen ahead of time instead of asking Power BI to do it so that it doesn't take a much of a time. So you can quickly delete these steps and say that I'm going to push this particular transformation back to my database and not perform it in Power BI editor or Power Query editor. Okay, so I think with that, we have covered this. Let's save this. And I say apply. Okay. So like I mentioned, it saves it with the extension PBIX. So let's save that. I'm good to go. Okay, so this has loaded the data here now. We have a new week column here. So let's build our first visual. Okay, so we had it as uh, dollars by time frame. So I click a visual here, I bring it in the center, and I want my sales by date. So I quickly just uh, check these columns, or I can also, let's say, if Let's uncheck this. And the other way to do it would be just drag and drop here. So that works too. And if you see, because it has noticed that uh, date is a hierarchical, so it has automatically built in the hierarchy and it has given me that uh, hierarchical dimension here. So I expand this, okay. And these arrows, so since it has identified it as a hierarchical dimension, it lets me drill down so i need to click this and so once right now this is at a year i drill down it goes to a quarter i drill down further it goes to a month okay that's my graph so let's see so anytime you're working or formatting you need to click on the graph and make sure that you're on that graph. So that's how the formatting works. I can do a quick formatting of, let's say my X axis says month. I want to change it to time. I go down here further. Let's see. It's right now the title is auto. I instead make it time. So that changes to time. I can change. I want a fancy border. I say on, I change this. It gives it a nice curved border. Okay, the graph again, let's look at that. Yeah, so there are several things you can change over here. The shadow border, the title of the graph, sales by time. So that changes, okay. And then, I want a, a constant line or a max line. I just have to say add and it should put a line in there. Okay, so that's with that graph. Now let's try another graph. We had a donut charge that is earnings by store. So let's put a donut chart. I align it in here. And I want my sales by store. And 
Okay, let's just do segment then. No, oh, sorry, that was a different report. That's why I got, okay. So let's do sales by segment. So this is my donor chart. I can change it to a pie. I can quickly see what works best. And the next one that I'm showing is, this is one of the newer visuals. This is more with the, um, Analytics kind of, okay. So for this one, we okay, so let's do our sales by segment. So it's running the analysis. So in this particular visual, I'm really not doing much. Power BI is automatically analyzing the data and trying to find out what are the key influences to increase my sales. So I can use this particular, and I can do this with any visual. So we can click this and see it in a zoomed view, right? So with this one, in particular, I want to show is because it lets, this is where Power BI does a whole, a lot of intelligent analysis without you really spending a lot of time. So what influences sales to increase, right? So when small segment, so it gives you this analysis, I can quickly click this and it gives me a further distribution. And uh, if I do back report, it saves the visual right there. I don't have to do anything further. And again, it also has top segments. I can click this, it gives me a further division and I can choose to leave it this way. And the, this is nothing but just Microsoft is asking for a quick feedback on this new visuals. Okay, so that's about all the visuals we put together. Let's give our report a quick title. I put a text box. Okay. You can center it, underline it, it looks okay. Then I want to give a quick logo of my company. I say I want to bring in an image. I say for a house logo. So that's quickly builds my report. That was that what we did with an Excel. And let's say if I want to build another page, I just go here. I can select all this, do this. I mean, this is a quick way. And then you can quickly change the sources of your report. Like if for the sales, if you want to change it to be sales price or units sold, you can just quickly uncheck this and do units sold. And that's what it would look like. Okay, so this is our report number one. Let's move on to the next report for which we are going to connect to a SQL Server database. So I already have Power BI Desktop open over here. I do a get data more. So I have my MySQL database here. One thing I do want to show about SQL Server databases, let's do a connect is you would see something called as import query and direct query. This feature is not available with MySQL, but it's available with SQL Server. This is feature is important is because if you're doing any real-time reporting, this would be helpful. When I say import, it actually imports the data and it saves it with your PBIX file. If you remember, I mentioned that you know your PBIX file could be big. So all the data that you import does get saved with your Power BI file with the PBX file. So depending on how much data you import, the size could be big. And the other option is direct query. So on this one, it's actually querying your database or the data source in real time. So every time you click a visual to change it and slice it, and if there's something that it needs to fetch more data, it will send a query back to your database. So it will use up every single session with the uh, query. But the benefit is it gives you real time data. Import will be the canned data that gets saved with your report. Okay, so let's do this one more time. Okay. 
So we are going to connect to a MySQL database. In this case, um, since I've already connected to this database in the past, this will connect seamlessly, but I'll show it to you how it would look if you're connecting for the first time. Because it won't ask me for any credentials. Okay, so let me just quickly show you how that would look. So this is the database I'm trying to connect to. I, uh... So this is exactly what it will look up to you. When you first do connect data, you'll get the screen that says enter your server and database name, post which it will bring you to this space to enter your credentials. So that's what it'll look like when you're trying to do it for the first time. Okay, so. Okay, so these are several of the uh, tables that are available in my database. So I'm going to quickly bring in actor, film, film actor, inventory, payment, rental, and store. So over here again, I can do a quick view of my data, how it looks. So one thing if you notice here is, though it's actor table, it's showing you something called circular.filmactor, that's another table. So Power BI identifies that what are the foreign keys, primary keys for your table, and it brings those uh, connections in or the relationships in. So uh, we'll do a transform data and I'll uh, show you how it exactly looks in Power Query Editor and what's the benefit of having that. Okay, so if you see here, just like we spoke, so this one is on the store. So it has found foreign key or relationship with different tables, the address, the customer, and inventory and all, uh, all the other tables. So what this lets you do is if I click this particular two side arrows, it, it lets me import some of the other columns. So let's say I don't want to keep this store and the actor table separate, and I wanted to look just one or the address table, so I can actually merge them. And when I do that transformation, it will save it as a new query. So I can select some columns which can be uh, put directly into this table. And if you don't click it, nothing happens. You want it in this way. You have already built your star schema and you don't want any other transformations. That's how that would work. So I think we, we won't be performing any transformations here. The tables, the star schema is clean as it can I need for my report. So I'm just going to do a close and apply. So it should bring in all the, so it takes a while depending on the number of rows you have, it'll just start showing how many rows it's importing into your report. So now it comes up like 16,000 rows, 14,000 rows. Okay, so we have our tables in here. Let's quickly build a report. I get a visual, bring it in. The rest of the steps are very similar. So I'm just gonna do it very quickly. So let's say, what are we looking at? We need our earnings by time, so that would be payment. I have my amount. And payment date. Okay. So that's white water. <clears throat> And one thing to check here, because Power BI a lot of times identify automatically, but if you want it to be any different. So in this case, since it's amount, it's okay to aggregate it. You can always change it to be an average or minimum according to that, uh, what you want it to be. So you can change what kind of aggregation is being performed. Okay, so let's do a pie chart. 
make sure to click away from the visual that you're already working on if you're making a new one. Otherwise, it just keeps changing the existing visual. Okay, so in this one, let's do a store ID. And so the revenue by store. And then what is the last one? Yeah, okay. So I just have a rental by rating bar graph. Okay, we'll just go with something. I can't seem to find the rental rating. Okay. okay. I could probably just do this too. There we go. Could use that instead. So yeah, this is the other feature. If you can't find the column you're looking for, you can always do a search. And that's about the visual. And the rest is same. Just a text box. Okay. So that's pretty much the report. Then you can save it, share it, or publish it. And with that, we are at the end of our demo. So just like quickly closing and we'll move on to questions. So with all this information, where can you go next? Uh, Power BI uh, documentation is on docs.microsoft.com or um, Microsoft Learn. That's pretty useful. Microsoft Events, uh, that's events.microsoft.com. I do recommend attending Dashboard in a day. They do, uh, they walk you through the actual class, uh, uh, the building several reports uh, through the different stages, transforming data, the visuals, and it goes from nine to five. And if you check on events.microsoft.com, it's called Dashboard in a day. And do check the language once I accidentally registered for a Spanish class, but yes, it's available and uh, a class that I would recommend. Community, if you're already building Power BI reports, you have several questions, you don't know where to go. Community.powerbi.com has been very helpful. It has helped me answer several of my questions when I get stuck. If you're planning to get yourself certified, then the 800 or the data analyst, that's a new Power BI certification. And if you have experience with reporting space, but you're still new to Power BI, if you follow the uh, learning path that's recommended on the certification page, that works really good for you. You do need some experience in the reporting because some of the concepts are more around the visualization and what kind of graph you're using. Uh, but if you're completely new to it, following the learning path is a good way to start get started because they have built in labs. And some of the other sites, uh, there are several other um, folks who are really good with Power BI. I follow their blogs. So I have included those links in there. And closing, thank you once again for coming and listening, New Stars of Data. And if you want to connect to me beyond this, uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. So... Yeah!